the Christchurch earthquake was a great opportunity for our engineers to learn how houses behave in a real earthquake event. Operation Suburb was run by the civil defence operation in Christchurch directly after the earthquake where 75,000 houses were visited within a week for safety assessment. During those safety assessments, building control officers checked to make sure that people could remain in those houses or whether they had to leave. There were 12 engineers of which four were Brands people who supported that group of building control officers. We checked any red placarded houses to ensure that they were certainly unsafe for people to occupy or that they could possibly remain in parts of that house and keep a roof over their head. This is an example of, of uh, one of several houses that we saw where there were issues with the connection between parts of the house and because the two different parts of the house were on different foundations they behaved differently and, and the connection wasn't strong enough to keep them together. Okay, this is an example of quite a number of the houses on the Port Hills where the concrete foundations were completely unreinforced, probably a house from about the 1950s or 40s, and you can see here how the, the concrete's just broken right out of the corner of the house as the foundations leant over. This shot just shows a close-up of the wall uh, where it's broken. You can see how the, there were pieces of red brick cast into the concrete, probably used as filler at the time when the wall was, was built, um, and there's absolutely no sign of any reinforcing steel in there, something we wouldn't have in this day and age. There were many issues with brick and block veneer on the Port Hills. Uh, older structures, particularly with block veneer or uh, old style brick, the brick uh, fell quite cleanly away from the house. In, uh, was not at all well tied to the framing behind. In comparison to the older style structures, the newer houses on the Port Hills, which had brick veneer built to modern standards, particularly the, the tie standards that, that held the veneer to the wall, performed a lot better. And even though in this case here, there has been a loss of veneer at the bottom of this chimney, the remainder of the veneer over the two storeys, over the whole of the rest of the structure, was still sound after the earthquake. Exterior insulation finishing systems or EIFS systems are becoming more common around the country and uh, it's quite a new form of exterior cladding. We did conduct laboratory testing some years ago on EIFS claddings under racking loads and we were able to create the same sort of damage as we saw in Christchurch, that is cracks emanating from the corners of the windows and doors. However, it was quite simple to make a, a repair to that area of the wall so that the whole wall didn't have to be replaced. The experience has given our engineers here a real opportunity to understand the real effects of an earthquake on houses. And we expect that we can use these learnings to develop standards for house construction in the future and improve the ones that we currently have.